here where I live in the western coastal United States, the prevailing image of the Denny's restaurant is that of an establishment you only go to when you've got nowhere else to go, living and dying by the near universal truth that they are always open, no matter when or where you are. It is as much a place for burning off a hangover at noon as it is a place where your hangover will set in at 3am because it's the only place in walking distance that will let you in the doors. The food is, by most any standard of culinary proficiency, a poor. My brain refuses to untangle an intrinsic risk association with any eggs from the establishment that aren't nearly bone dry. I was once driving somewhere with an old roommate, and when he pulled into a Denny's parking lot to figure out some directions, the first thing we saw was someone casually exiting the restaurant and immediately puking in a bush. Notions about the restaurant chain's cumulative atmosphere is hardly an improvement on the food itself, either. If you go there past a certain time of night, you're just going to have to deal with someone wearing more layers of clothing than seasonally appropriate, making some kind of scene while you're there. Chances are it'll be fine, just tip your waiter something extra for the trouble. Infamously, the Denny's in my hometown was the backdrop to a stabbing in my senior year of high school, and several years prior, a brass knuckle brawl took place outside a Denny's a town over. Neither of these events dissuaded me from eating there, however. I mean, when you're a dumb kid from a small town, you need somewhere to go, and free coffee refills is a deal you just cannot pass up. With all of this in mind, it may surprise you to learn that, nah, I'm not gonna patronize you. Look, the archetype of American thing that Japan does better is pretty ubiquitous even among non-weeaboos. Did you know that Japanese 7-Eleven is actually epic? Clearly you don't know the joy of getting a first degree burn from pouring nacho cheese into an open bag of Doritos. There are countless articles and videos on the internet about how Japanese Denny's is way, way different from American Denny's, but just in case this is new to you, yeah, they're considered pretty high quality establishments in Japan. They've got a far larger menu that, in addition to their vision of American food, incorporates both Japanese cuisine and a seemingly limitless array of desserts. Uh, they also have a drink bar. The family restaurant is an institution unto itself over there, by which standard Japanese Denny's isn't really anything too terribly special. Gusto, Royal Host, Joyful, Coco's, they all follow a similar formula. But yeah, for as much ink has been spilled on Japanese Denny's divergence from its source brand, few English language resources interrogate just how this came to be. And because I can't help myself, I did some reading up on it. Turns out it's not an especially interesting story, so here it is in as few words as possible. The first Japanese Denny's opened in Yokohama in 1974 following a deal between Denny's Corporate and Ito Yokado the year prior. My understanding is that the restaurant chain's first decade of operation was mostly centered on acting as a facsimile of an American restaurant, and didn't really stray from the American menu, likely because they had a pretty restrictive deal with Denny's home base. In 1984, Ito Yokado bought the trademark for the Japanese market outright, which which allowed them to incorporate pretty much any menu items they wanted, and do more or less whatever they wanted with the brand. You can see this reflected in how Japanese Denny's restaurants still use an older logo, as well as some of their brand collaborations, which we'll get into. Most endemically though, I feel you can see it in their relationship with a particular artist in the 90s. Through the 90s, though specific dates are difficult to pinpoint, the man himself says it started in 92, and I've seen folks anecdotally say that it ended in 97, Denny's partnered with illustrator Hisashi Eguchi, who would provide art for their menus, create a one-off manga that I cannot find any scans or pictures of, and design the characters for a handful of commercials. The one with the Dilf and his kids is probably the most famous, but this one for their summer special is my favorite. Denny's stamina menu. Shigeki menu. Denny's. So cute. 
However, I would simply be remiss not to mention the Denny's Hisashi Eguchi commercial that featured a sweepstakes where you could win a Fujitsu FM Towns Marty. Much love to the birthplace of Asuka 120%. There was probably some other stuff to magazine advertisements, I'm guessing, but I'm not an expert. I am a big fan, though. Depending on the day, Eguchi is my favorite artist, period, and I just love these pieces so much. His adaptation of Eiji and Suzuki's Americana as status symbol pop art ethos is weirdly perfect for Denny's because his work shines with class as much as it bleeds common comfort. Suzuki actually did do work for Denny's in the 80s, presumably 84, when the trademark purchase occurred, but I'm not positive. And it's also great, but Eguchi's work for the company feels like the singular vision of what Denny's aims to be for the Japanese market. Somewhere everyone can eat a good meal, take their time, and make some memories in. And I get the feeling Eguchi's commercials are, if not the, among the most well-remembered commercials Denny's Japan ever ran, so job well done. That being said, Japanese Denny's never had a Sonic Underground promotion, so fuck em, trash. Listen, I made my intentions clear in the title of this video. Off-brand Denny's restaurants show up like all the time in anime and manga, and I always think it's really funny, and the idea of attempting to rank them based on what small glimpses I can get from them was too stupid an idea for me to pass up. I've got like 30 some odd entries here, just know that this is not remotely comprehensive and it's all for fun. Rather than using graded tiers or creating a numbered list, my ranking system is going to be based around the Denny's menu itself. The American one, I mean. But I'll explain the tiers as we go. Just know that I am only basing my ratings on the restaurants themselves, not the shows. I've not even seen most of these. In addition, just know that there's no particular order, just what flowed best for the script. Lastly, I'm only counting the stuff that I feel I can definitively say are supposed to be Denny's. So, for example, Gardenia from Gamers is disqualified, as is Wagnaria from Working, both of which which I suspect are based on the family restaurant Sizedia. Uh, this also means I can't include Space Dandy's boobies because it's a parody of Hooters. Needless to say, that would be top tier if I could. This too tragically excludes most Anna Miller's style restaurants. See my video on Lucky Star's return to publication for more on Anna Miller's, including the PC98 game Pie Restaurant Anna Middlers. It wouldn't be mid in my heart. Knowing all of my arbitrary guidelines, it may seem strange for me to start with Johnny's from Toradora. With a name like that, it's gotta be based on Jonathan's, another Japanese family restaurant, right? Well, I find this is a pretty instructive example. See how weird the shape of this restaurant is? Stairs up to the restaurant entrance, parking below, super distinctive, right? It's based on a real life Denny's location, specifically the Hatagaya joint in Shibuya. I'm not going to become an expert on each and every one of the Denny's restaurants in Japan in order to judge each and every location on its accuracy or anything like that, but it definitely had to be a factor in including a few of these. As for the Toradora restaurant, it looks very clean. They're hiring for part-time employees, so hopefully they're not putting too much strain on the employees they do have. The Parfait Taigo orders is quite ornate, which is true to life, although it's not really my style. Gotta give it to him for incorporating the Anna Miller style uniform into the attire here. Uh, in truth, Denny's uniforms are very utilitarian, and therefore plenty of anime decide they need to variate on it. Although Toradora is, all things considered, a grounded enough show that the base uniform would have fit just fine. I'm gonna give Johnny's a hash browns. You can't really go wrong with it, but it's hardly a centerpiece. Next up is what I can only assume is the free Iwatobi swim club we have at home on ice, Skate Leading Stars, with its restaurant, Dairies. I like the corner seat setup here, and the bricks feel pretty unique among other anime Denny's, but all these twinks do is yell the whole time they're here. If this is the kind of clientele they're fostering, I can't say I'm particularly interested in spending my time there. Junior chocolate chip pancakes for this one, when the implication that a reasonable portion of chocolate chip pancakes must be deemed junior is fundamentally patronizing, and they don't even draw a smiley face with whipped cream or whatever. Another arguably mixed case, Sket Dance brings up Annie's, or maybe Annie's. 
The apostrophe placement is, needless to say, inspired, and while the name recalls both Denny's and Anna Miller's, the uniform feels more like Jonathan's. In the end, though, the building exterior shouts Denny's to me, so I'm counting it here. Again, I'm playing fast and loose here. If you want to strike it from your own internal record, be my guest. There's some manga magazines in the entryway, and not sure if these are purchasable or just there to leaf through while you're at the establishment, but I quite like that. The cast never orders any food, but from the food menu you can see they have a pretty solid looking Hamburg steak. This one gets an everyday value slam. Nothing elevates it to a higher echelon, but its purpose is well served in all respects. Meanwhile, Dunny's, courtesy of school days, has a rather dull menu. Dull looking desserts. Dull, dull, dull. This one gets a fish and chips. You don't want to order fish and chips from fucking Denny's, man. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, I'm feeling a little out of my depth with Kayoi Chugaku. It feels somewhere between shit you saw in Adult Swim in 2002 because you woke up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat with the TV on and shit you caught glimpses of on the TVs at Chuck E. Cheese at your shitty little cousin's stupid birthday party in 2005, but nonetheless, its signature family restaurant, Rennie's, leaves something to be desired. I'm sure their Hamburg steak is fine, but the assorted vegetable side looks like it's probably just frozen and not especially seasoned. The uniforms feel much more like a burger joint to me, nothing wrong with that though. Another junior chocolate chip pancakes here. Would you believe that Kubo won't let me be invisible? Tennies has bova? No other anime Denny's has such a thing. That being said though, the whole joint's got kind of a cheap film set feel, like everything's made of particle board or something. Hash browns for originality on this one. Alright, here's a weird one. In Gintama's third episode, and probably more, I don't know, you can see in the background there's a sign for a Denny's written in hiragana, and they never go there, so you can't really get much more than that. I mean, again, I think, so many episodes. With an incomplete picture in mind, I gotta give this one egg. Like, there are hundreds of ways to prepare eggs, just Egg is not descriptive enough. It's an unknown entity. Anime Denny's love parfaits. It loves giving its anime girls parfaits. Not as many anime love giving their anime girls Red Bulls, but I guess we can consider New Game one of the chosen few. Few, though, it is not one of the anime in the world that features a Denny's restaurant. I like the interior design on this one, high up shelving with the potted plants, classy stuff. I'm feeling a light everyday value slam. Tokyo Revengers gives us Danny's with the green logo, sure. Denny's was originally named Danny's Donuts, makes sense. Uh, somewhat infamously, Danny's Donuts was not named after any particular Danny. Very mysterious. It's unclear if the Danny in Tokyo Revengers is Danny's is any particular Danny, though. I quite like the weaved basket patterns on the backrests. They've got those little call buttons that Japanese Denny's implemented sometime in the 2010s. As you can see, the guys here have cleaned their plates, which is probably a good sign. Hash browns. Here's the Denny's from Fuka, also home to a crispy pie restaurant, very nice. These guys have also finished their meals when we cut in, must be edible at least. We actually do get a parfait, which like all the others looks like too much. Man, it just looks so sterile in here. Junior chocolate chip pancakes, I think. Another lovely Danny's can be found in Beck. The exterior gives it a very 50s diner feeling that a lot of others don't, and while the interior is pretty uncommon worthy, Beck's Danny's benefits from the show's frequent use of licensed music. This marks, I think, the only anime Denny's I've found that has diegetic music, at least diegetic pop music with vocals, just like real life Denny's. For that alone, it gets the coveted Grand Slam rating. Date, uh, Live features perhaps the least coherent shot composition and backgrounds of the night. Like, we go from a shot of the Danny's parking lot to a shot of a subway exit with a sign for Danny's featuring a picture of the Danny's location to the Danny's exterior and then they never enter it. And later that same episode, part of the city gets destroyed, and like, I assume the Danny is, is part of the wreckage, so I guess we'll never know what the interior is like. I mean, I'll probably never know. I, I, I really don't need to know. 
It's gonna be egg. Final Danny's seems to appear in one of the High Definition Era Detective Conan episodes, but there are literally over a thousand of those, so this single Bigfoot sighting-esque picture is all I have to go off. Yet one more egg. Demis, or perhaps Demis, is brought to us courtesy of an anime from this very year, Mo Ipon. Good to know the anime Denny's ecosystem is still healthy. Once upon a time in my hometown, my old roommate and I would religiously refer to Denny's as Demis, two M's. Uh, no recollection of how that started, but this Demis brings back fond memories of being really fucking hungover and eating sourdough toast. I'll admit, I've only seen the first episode of this show, but I've got a maybe surprising, maybe not soft spot for mid-girl sports anime. Uh, Princess Nine Heads shout me out. That first episode's theme of being so exhausted by all the parts of a passion that suck that you mistakenly think you don't even enjoy it at all, and being almost unwilling to let yourself admit how much you do enjoy it for how much it simultaneously hurts. I don't know man, it's something I can relate to on a lot of levels. This isn't about any bullshit like that though, this is about Denny's, and this one is pretty good looking. Very pretty omurice in their menus, the girls have cleaned their plates, and are even going back for seconds. The parfait is nothing to write at home about, but that is fine by me. Everyday value slam. In Tenshi and Tokyo's fifth episode, we briefly see a Donnie's restaurant where Mihoshi and Kione, in their continuing adventures in Earth poverty, work for a total of one shift before Mihoshi manages to literally explode the entire restaurant. It breaks my heart to have to do this, because I love these two, but nobody should have to eat exploded food, so I'm awarding this one with the worst possible rating. Two moons over my hammy. About as pleasant as the sense of shame that washes over you when you, as a grown adult, have to order something with a name so infantilizing, an embarrassment both to you and to your server when they then have to repeat it back at you. It doesn't get lower than that. As an aside, uh, this episode also features a Doremi Pizza, which is also the name of an establishment in the Sega game Rent a Hero Number 1. I imagine they're either both referencing the same thing I'm not familiar with, or it's a very strange coincidence. Rent a Girlfriend serves up a rather middle of the road establishment, also by the name of Donnie's, whose lived in quality is conveyed by haphazard, scratchy brushwork all over the backgrounds, though rest assured, it's a perfectly clean location. We can see, thanks to the shot of a girl's ass, that there's no gum stuck under the table. Woohoo! I really like this cherry blossom teacup, whose design is perhaps slightly more in line with the feel of the manga's rendition, with the floral embroidery on the booths. Of all the anime denny's, this is particularly exemplary, I find, of the family restaurant's function as not just a place to eat, but a place to be. The characters never order any food, they just use the joint to chat. The drinks, even, are secondary. This might be sort of hard to wrap your head around if, like me, you're an American, because I find there's somewhat of a taboo around both going to a restaurant and not ordering anything or staying too long after you've finished your meal. But family restaurants have the cafe-like appeal, where you're fine to post up for hours on end, something especially popular among students, hence their prominence in anime about high schoolers. My understanding is that this is something the family restaurant has trended toward with time rather than always having this association. If this was always a primary utility, they'd probably be called something other than family restaurants after all, but for all the texts I've imported for video research, I decided I would pass on this book on family restaurants, because though it sounds genuinely quite interesting, I mean, this is a fucking video about bootleg anime denny's. If I let mission creep set in for even a premise this stupid, I'll never release another video. Hash browns for rent a girlfriend. While I'm excluding manga from this list, once again, to keep the scope of this video in check, I'll give a quick shout out to the food manga Shoku King for its Doni's restaurant, featured in a chapter about the family restaurant's relationship to Hamburg Steaks. I'm near certain there are more food manga out there, and food anime too, that featured Denny's variants, but the market for food manga over here isn't especially large, and they all run like a billion chapters, so the sample size readily available versus what there is in the world is kinda small. Again, this video is not comprehensive. 
Benny's from Durara is another entry we never see the interior to. But instead of just calling it a Schrodinger's family restaurant and moving on, I'll make an exception here. Because I think there are enough environmental details that a narrative emerges. See, this is clearly a high foot traffic area in the big city, so I like to imagine it's a good safe haven if you're, say, having a girls' night out and someone starts following you or something weird goes on. That being said, it could close down at like 9pm or something and would prove totally useless in that scenario. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt though and say hash browns just for safety. Uh, property values in dense urban environments aren't known for being cheap, so they'd be throwing money away by closing it down early. Benny's from Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, yes I know it's not a fucking isekai, is another restaurant modeled after a real life Denny's location. The protagonist works at this one, something you don't see very often, and I think the uniforms are cute. Despite something about this Benny's raising the Olive Garden flag in my amygdala, the warm lights and the art on the walls make it seem very inviting. Everyday value slam. Benny's from Strike the Blood is advertising a Benny's street fair. <laughs> zero idea what that could possibly entail, but I'm a little dubious. Despite the very inviting rainbows and default Photoshop stars, the fountain drink machine is clearly labeled for night breeds, and I'm gonna guess if I don't know I qualify, I don't, so for my purposes, this one's gonna have to get a junior chocolate chip pancakes. Benny's from Tola Fruit Darkness, man they're always drinking fucking orange juice in these shows. Fish and chips. Scum's Wish features Bonnie's, or maybe Banny's, I guess, and they really want you to take notice of the name because they do like a whole cut in on the logo at the end of the scene there. Bright red cushions and over rice. It's perfect. Quintessential. Grand slam. Kaiji's Donies gets a hash browns. Initial D initially is home to families, and while in name it doesn't smack especially of Denny's, it's based on the same Denny's location as Toradora's Johnny's. But here's a puzzle, later in the series they switch to an entirely different family restaurant, Johnny's. No relation. I'm not sure if it's treated in canon like it's their same old stomping ground or what, I guess it's possible they got kicked out or denied service or maybe one of them thought he got food poisoning from families and did that thing where the restaurant was just completely ruined for him afterward, even though it was only almost certainly a fluke, or like, it was his fault in the first place for ordering clams 15 minutes before closing, or maybe families just closed down. Personally, I like the shape-shifting restaurant theory, so that is what I am buying into. Despite the interiors, I'm giving this, or these, an egg for the mystery. Although I suppose being more familiar with Initial D could solve some of this confusion. Draw your own conclusions. Durlith, courtesy of Nyaruko-san, is named after cosmic horror author and early HP Lovecraft publisher August Durlith. Fittingly so, given this whole series seems to be one big Lovecraft meme, and because it is also a product of a post-economic downturn otaku nightmarescape, it is also an Anna Miller's. Woo. Look, I don't go here, but the interior is drab and we never see any food. Junior chocolate chip, whatever I'm calling a stupid fucking category. Despite my lack of exposure to the franchise, I am now forever indebted to Hayate the Combat Butler for bestowing upon me the name Death Knees. In the same episode, we also get a Wickdonald's, which that's a video for someone else to make, but you know they were on sicko mode with this. Hence why I forgive Death Knees for its uncommon worthy decor and sloppy looking food. You I think everyday value slam is too high praise, but I'm splitting the difference here between the underwhelming interior and the exterior, which, as documented by some twisted individual, non pejorative, is very accurate to yet another real life Denny's location. I suspect we have the anime tourism boom of the last 15 years in particular to thank for these comparison shots. And from the same seed, of course, grows those with a compulsion to apply a sense of rigor that is both unjustified and unreasonable but extremely entertaining irrespective. Like, for example, the writer of this blog post on Idolmaster Side M's pennies. Sure, from the outside, it looks accurate, but it all fucking falls apart once you step inside. Look at this, they got the color of the call button wrong. Fuck, can't trust anything anymore. And you know what? I'm with them. Fuck this place. Bottom tier. Die. An ontologically superior Denny's can be found in Tokyo Tribe 2, though the full title is Dinner Penny's Restaurant. This joint rocks. 
So often, anime denny's are underpopulated so they don't have to draw or animate crowd shots, which is fine, I totally get it. But this is one of the few that feels like a bustling restaurant. That combined with the overwhelming warm glow, the cute waitress with her cute hoops, I'm a big fan. Grand fucking slam. Tragically, the same cannot also be said of Erica Seven's Daddies, despite its unbelievably good name. This place serves booze, which is pretty cool, but I have to question how they didn't regulate the amount of alcohol Talho was allowed to consume because she gets beyond trashed. And look at the corny ass suit they're making this poor waiter wear. You got these street teens terrorizing the parking lot, good to know some things don't even change after 10,000 years, and yet in the same breath the whole restaurant gets slammed into with a huge mech, so maybe the future isn't all it's cracked up to be. Gotta go with fish and chips. The name is the only thing saving it from hammy. Fret not though, for all is not lost in the realm of paternally named Denny's offshoots, and we have Psyche K to thank for the even more amazingly titled Dad Apostrophe Ease. I gotta say, I am shocked by how much they managed to make a 2016 anime look like circa year 2000's Digipaint. Like, was that intentional? This show looks fucked. Belly <clears throat> slam. Actual year 2000 digipaint and perennial yaoi glompcore anime Gravitation features what might be the worst looking family restaurant food of the whole bunch. Like this literally looks like fucking poop spaghetti. Look, does it even matter what I fucking rate this? You may have noticed, based on the sample size I present to you here, Denny's variations appear pretty frequently in anime about music. And while I doubt there's a strong association between diners and dumb DIY kids in Japan, there sure is in America. The specific restaurant seems to be regional, like for some it's Waffle House, but for me, Denny's is permanently associated in my brain with the bands I was in in my early 20s. Be it getting late night desperation food after playing a show, or just ordering a coffee and talking shop with my bandmate about our songs after closing up at the rehearsal studio I worked at and recorded in during off hours, I've got a lot of fond music related memories cushioned within many a Denny's. I actually once ate at the hardcore show What the Fuck Is Up Denny's just a few months before that event happened. It is perhaps for this reason, combined with manga author Hamaji Aki's status as Tom Clancy for DIY Brats, that Bochi the Rock's Denethons still counts in my heart, despite it looking like, being named like, and being based on a real-life Jonathan's location. Let me have this. I may have my stupid petty issues with this show, I'll probably talk about elsewhere eventually, but it is unassailable fact that in spite of my general disinterest in seeing myself reflected in art, you know, my work is personality driven, I see more than enough of myself every day, I have felt a kind of indescribable transcendent euphoria watching anime girls mob over to a diner after playing a gig that had maybe only been topped elsewhere by an earlier episode of the very same show. In the grand scheme, it doesn't even matter, but putting aside the interior being bland in the same way so many modern anime backgrounds are, the food looks great by family restaurant standards. Thick cut fries, hamburg steak, I don't know, butter chicken, some kind of curry, not really sure. Spaghetti, my paisan's heart whispers that that's basil on top, but something uglier inside me tells me it's probably parsley, but still, it all looks good. I'm sure Bochi appreciated the tablet menus, and I gotta give props to the USB outlets stationed at each booth. Five stars, Grand Slam, this is the anime Denny's I like the most. But if my arguments and the first three letters of the name aren't enough to convince you that it counts, I've got another pick. So, instead of actually ranking all of these, because let's be honest, who actually cares where Danny's number 8 ranks against Benny's number 12, I'll lay out my favorite, least favorite, and the one I think is the most middle of the road, and you can fill in the rest however you please. And the awards go to... Tokyo Tribe 12 Pennies for favorite, with maybe the Beck Danny's right behind it. School Days is Dunny's is the middliest, 
and because I think it's very funny to single it out, Side M Pennies is the worst of the worst. One more final, this is not a definitive or comprehensive list. For example, I've heard there might be one in Read or Die the TV, but I didn't want to skim through all of it because it's a show I'd like to watch myself someday. Furthermore, as a bit of insight into my process for this video, I was racking my brain trying to think of more I'd seen, even just examples of scenes taking place at family restaurants in general. There was one I thought was surefire. There's that early episode of the original season of Yu-Gi-Oh! where the boys think Anzu is doing Enjo Kosai and they find out that she just got a part-time job. I thought maybe it was a family restaurant, but nah, it's MF Burger World. Stupid me. As it turns out, there's a lot of anime in the world, more than any one person could reasonably see in a lifetime, so the true totality of anime denny's in existence may never be knowable, and I think that's just fine. But there's still one more point of intersection between denny's and anime that needs discussion. Official collaborations. While nothing could possibly compare to either the official Lawson Vocaloid nor the official Ponya Lawson fit, check it out, it's even got a little name tag, Japanese Denny's has had some pretty good collaborations in its day. You've got expected stuff like Hello Kitty and Pokemon, but here are a few that I think are interesting and relevant here. First up, here's the k collaboration, which started on July 20th, 2010. If I understand correctly, the idea is that they picked a dessert for each of the five main girls, including two new menu items, a peach milfi pie, and a fresh peach and milk pudding soup. Cold soup, I'm guessing, since this was, you know, released in the dead middle of summer. The following year saw a collaboration with Bakuman, the jump manga about making jump manga, running from April 26th to May 23rd, 2011. A special clear file was available, riveting, but in this case, Bakuman characters would crop up around the stores and in the menus, which I think makes it more in-depth than the Kaon one, which just had a poster up in the restaurants, I think. Which is funny, because I read a good chunk of Bakuman as a teen, and I don't recall family restaurants playing much of a part in them. Meanwhile, with Kaon, it's like, what is a cute girls doing cute things anime without ample time spent discussing or consuming sweets. Last one for the night, and most mutually relevant, we've got the Kofuku Graffiti collab, which debuted January 5th, 2015, alongside Denny's highly anticipated All-You-Can-Eat Pancakes Volume 3. Those who applied were eligible to win one of however many Nanako gift cards featuring a unique illustration from the cooking manga's author. Very cool. Just kidding, there was also a small collaboration from 2017 with March Rolled In Like a Lion, or whatever the localized title for this series is. Someone fucked up big time though, because this collaboration took place in April. Like, come on, you were only a month off. Look, conclusions are a formality. I'm not writing a high school essay, and I doubt you want to feel like you're grading one. I made this video because I thought Dunny's was a funny thing to call a restaurant and a cartoon. If you're so inclined, you can fill in the blanks here with whatever analytical framework gets you going to round this out. Splash around in the pool all you want. Just don't get too pruny or it's gonna hurt to walk back to the car when it's time to go home.